I'm going to start with a little word of prayer. Then we're going to get in uh, right into the word. If you have your um, Bible with you, we're going to be in um, 1 Kings, the 21st chapter. Dear most precious Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we come right now asking you to forgive us of our sins. But Father, we seek your presence right now. We glorify you. We magnify you, Father. Father, as I begin to speak your, your word, Father, I ask that seeds be sown, Father. Even if it's just a nugget to make us think, Father. To let us wonder and, and, and contemplate on you in the name of Jesus. I ask that I decrease and I ask the Holy Spirit to go before me, Father, and begin to set the minds and the hearts, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we ask right now that you put a word in our pastor and minister as well, Father. We just thank you for all the members that are here that are present, Father, and those that are sick and shut in, Father, and those that, Father, are near and farther, far, Father. We just thank you right now for we bless them, Father. Just keep them lifted, Father. Keep them and draw them closer to you, Father. Pull on them and nudge, and nudge on them, Father, that they would know that you are God and God alone. And we forever give you the praise, the glory, and honor. In your son Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, and amen. Good morning. You may have your seat. Well, today I'm going to be talking about um, old Jezebel herself today. We're going to do a dip in her hub right now a little bit. See how her spirit flowing this morning. Amen, if it's all right with you. So if you uh, have your word, like I said, it's 1 Kings uh, chapter 21. We're going to start at verse 1 because we need to, I, I want to give you a little background as to why we're, we're doing this. Um, she is, her, her spirit um, is sent forth, and I'm going to show you this, is sent forth to destroy the church from the inside out. It's created for, for um, if you notice, people from the outside contaminate the people from the inside. And I want to give you a, a little quick little lesson. So, because the word is sent to give you revelation, to open your eyes so that you can see. So when you are taught something, from then on, you recognize that spirit. You'll be able to, to spot it and know how to pray against it and know how to counsel certain things. But if you don't see it, if, if nobody never uh, pointed it out, then it's hard for us to, to, to be able to know what we're working with or what we warn against. Amen. And this is right here. This particular one is warned against the church himself. So I really wanted to talk about it this morning. Amen. It says... Uh, Oh, they want they want me to shine. Come on. Cut me on. Cut me on, son. Amen. Uh, it says in, in the first chapter, ver first verse, uh, 21st verse. I'm sorry. Chapter 21, verse 1. And and it came to pass after these things that Nabal, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel. Hard by the palace of Ahab, the king of Samaria. And Ahab spoke to Nabob and said, Give me thy vineyard that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house. And I will give thee for it a vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I, I will give thee the worth of it in money. Nabob said unto Ahab, the Lord forbiddeth me that I should give my inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And when I was reading this, I couldn't figure out 
number one, why Ahab wanted his vineyard. When the when the chapter verse chapter says the first verse says he is living in a palace. Hmm. Why are you gardening when you can have a garden on the inside of the palace? You can have a you can buy land anywhere, but since it's close to your house, see some sometimes we want things that ain't ain't ours. It's, it says and then in verse two it says. I give you a better vineyard. Well, if you already got better vineyard, if you already got something, I'm trying to figure you want my little my little garden, but you got something already better, or you can, like you say, you can pay for something bigger. But you got this that's 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 something that us Christians have to work on is seeing what somebody else wants. And want that, but don't know what it took for them to get it, and don't know what it's taking them to keep it. I don't want nothing. I, if God is so vast, like we say, is he? If he's so powerful, he can give me. You see what I'm saying? He can make a way. But it's got to be of God, and that's what I want to show you today. It says, and Ahab came into the house heavy. And displeased because of the words of Nabab, the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my father. And he laid down upon his bed, turned away his face, and would not eat bread. So you telling me this grown king threw a tenter tantrum and got in the palace. Grown people. Not receiving what they want, throwing a tension tantrum. Sometimes we have them right here in the church. I ain't don't even look up. It says, and I'm serious. People have an attitude because you didn't say good morning to them. But you said good morning. I said good morning. But since I didn't say good morning, Aaron. Since I didn't point you out specifically, you come here, you got an attitude, the whole service. And then afterwards, my do our doors are open. You won't even come in the door and say, well, you kind of hurt my feelings. See, this is what we're working on in our household. We're working on this. We've been doing this for a little while now. That if I'm saying something wrong, if, I didn't, if it didn't come out right to you, I need you to stop me where I'm come up to where I'm washing dishes. Come up where I'm at and say, you know, I, that I didn't like the way you said that. Don't wait a whole week, a whole month, something else go down, and then you you don't you building up stuff. You like a volcano. You just building up, building up till you explode. And when you explode, you explode on everybody, and you burning everything in your path. But Jezebel came unto him and said unto him, Why is why is thy spirit so sad? Eat us no bread. He said unto her, Because I spake to Naab the Zebrite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else if it pleases thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And, Je and Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Doest thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let I will give thee the vineyard, Nabal, the Jezreelite. One problem that we have as Christians, why do everybody else have to affirm what God has, has put in you? She said, do you not govern all of Israel. So why she got to tell you you're the king? If somebody got to keep telling you who you are, then maybe that ain't you. We need three or four confirmations. We spoke to you, you the same thing in your spirit. Why a man got to keep telling you that's who you are? If God spoke it, then it's so. It, it, it's so. It might not be in your, in your time frame. It's in God's. 
I, he, if he called me to be whoever or whatever, it's going to come to pass. I'm not going to keep uh, speaking, talking to you, trying to find out. For sure, is that me? See, that's how the spirit of Jezebel is in because we're not persuaded who we are. So when that person keeps telling you who you are, then that person becomes your God. Why? Because they keep you up. So she wrote letters to Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters out to the elders and to the noblemen that were in that were in his city dwelling with Nabab. She sent and used the man of God's seal and his and his and his parchment and his paper and his writing. See, we use social media. See, we put stuff out that we know God ain't pleased with, but we put it out there anyway. And then we we keep agreeing with the negativity on Facebook about the church. And I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. If they're talking about the church, then you the church. So why are you why are you letting it go viral against the church when we consider the church? So if they're talking about any man or woman of God, they're talking about our family. When we gonna get in our mind that we as a church is there's no, no the clicks we are all together one but we are let it go viral so she's using stuff in her husband's name that if you would have used back then if somebody else would have used would have died immediately because she took his seal his personal seal his signet and how she got it, I don't know. That's another, that's, that's another one. For another time. We're going to talk about that. Take it from your man. Take it from your own house. How are you going to take it from your own house? You're supposed to be one. But he didn't have enough courage. And he was supposed to represent God because he was king. He didn't have enough courage to go against this. The own, see, you sometimes you be sleeping with the enemy. Sometimes you praying with the enemy. Sometimes you speaking and talking to the enemy that's in your own house. That's another. We gonna go on past that. I'm gonna drop that. Let's think about that. When you gazing in eyes. And she wrote in the letters, proclaim a fast and set Nabab on high amongst the people. So, out for a minute. She proclaimed a fast. So she knows God's way. She knows what excites church members. If we say a fast, we just hop on it. God ain't put it in your spirit. The Holy Spirit ain't put it in your spirit. But when they say it's fasting, or if they say something about worship, or sermon, or prayer, we just automatically hop on it. But I'm telling you, by this sentence alone, this scripture alone, every worship, every prayer, every, every type of fast is not of God. Just because they're calling it a fast don't mean it's a God fast. Because even I was, sometimes we be doing shut-ins. You shut in all night and you look worse than you. You fasted and you most sicker than you was when you look, look at the when Daniel and them fasted, they in water. He said they were more fatter, skin more prettier. But I'm telling you, sometimes we come like a soda cracker. We all suck. 
You didn't fast, you just took a diet. Bags up under your eyes, you don't turn dog. I'm like, what? baby, I don't want to fast when you don't call me. Cause, Cause your fast ain't right. Because like I tell you, ain't no way in the world you, you say a prayer late, late that night before you go to bed and wake up mad in the morning. God ain't dealing with you. And when you hold a fast and you ain't dealing with you, you need to go back and check it. But the fast that she proclaimed, you got to realize whether or not the fast is for creating life or destroying life. Are you fasting for God in his presence? Or are you fasting to get something? Somebody man, somebody house, somebody car, somebody's job, somebody's p- p- position on the job. How are you fasting? Because my God has a wound that I don't have to pray to get them. But they'll invent a position for me. Lord, I don't want nobody else man. Up. I'm not going Facebook. I'm nobody else man because when I get I had to keep lifting up. I can't lift up two or three. I, I'm, I'm, I'll be woe out trying to lift up all these men. How did Jezebel know what a fact? Was when she is the daughter of Ithab, the king of the Zidonians. How did she know what will see? That's that's when the Bible says itching ears. How did she know what will spark the Christians to fast? And then she proclaimed it and set it up. Come on, you got some witches setting up stuff for you, and you you falling for it. You got some some spirits you need to be checking. You need to check the spirit by the spirit. And he and, and, and set two men before to, to bear witness against him. And that, that's king. They do God. Sometimes they do God, but they won't worship him. They're not worshiping God. They know all about God. You can't see no evidence. You can't see no fruit. You can't see the presence of God. And she also knew that it took two witnesses. So she took the evil man. See, I'm telling you, the, the, the evil is mingling with us. The, the evil is on your job. Evil tried to come in the church. But if we don't lift up a standard, I'm going to get ahead of myself. Ooh. If you fast, it looks like we ought to be able to recognize the evil. See, we got to check our, our, our natural sight because if you look at them in the natural and they don't look right, they ought to click right quick in your spirit eyes to look a little deeper. If they speak something that comes off a little whack, it might be just one word. And it makes if, if the Holy Spirit makes you ponder that, then you got to look a little closer. Because he's speaking to you, but you're not listening. He's trying to tell you that there's a spirit mingling with yours, and he wants you. Oh. And then he says, and now, and stone him that he may. We got to be strong enough when we fast to tell Satan no. I don't care. If Jesus. You can follow your family members. But are they speaking God? If they're not speaking God, then you have the right to say no. Because you can come, you can set that standard. 
if you're a Christian and it don't feel right in your own spirit, if you got to set it under your breath, I don't know about that, God. Then it's time for you to go. You ain't got to be rude and loud and crazy. You can go into prayer. That's what your prayer language is for. They don't have to know you pray. And then you know, they'll come back later and say, I thought about that, but I don't think we ought to do that. But you didn't clown. You just took it to that could change things. Sometimes you got to take it to the one that can ch actually change it. Make a difference. Fussing and fussing ain't happening. You messing up the situation. Plus you messing up that extra money. To pay day. Watch what you're doing. Hey, uh, Deacon I always say you got to learn what 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 you got to learn how to fight the right ones. You can't fight everyone. You got to pick your right battles. And the men of the city, even the elders and the noblemen who inhabited in the city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them, as it was written in the letter which she had sent unto them. This spirit is so dangerous. Because it's designed to destroy the men and women of God from the inside. These were noblemen and elders in the city that should have stood up against her. Whether or not it costs you something. Sometimes your anointing, because you are protecting others, will cost you something. But are you willing to die and, and, and lift up a standard of Jesus Christ, whether or not it costs you? something because there's because those leaders had people following them that did not know why they were fasting and they were fasting to kill another man God who was innocent and all standing looking at him all, all he told the king was have what God gave me and I'm like that you can't have up a fight you come against anything of mine you just be I'm not giving you what God if God spoke it on my life and told me I can have it you can't have it you can't take it but she spent she sent true believers men and women of God she put them on a fast to kill Another man or woman of God. What are we doing in the church? That we killing each other. To only fall back down. Because God is not going. God is not pleased. Why would you pray and fast to God to destroy somebody else? Why would you involve other people to try to kill other people in the church? Girl, I don't like them, so you don't like them. That's I told somebody that, baby, that was, get out of my face. With that high school mess, that middle, middle school mess, I, I don't care if you don't like them, it nothing to me. Because I'm trying to spirit by the spirit. It might not be her. It might be you. So for me, all oh, y'all just to withdraw from me for a few so I can discern what's, what's going on so God can speak to me. Because maybe you may not be the friend I need if you're going to pick and choose my friend. The devil is a lie. Because I'd be like, well, baby, if you're going to be doing all that, my light bill do at the end of the month. You might as well pay that. If you, you got to be putting some money in on something for even to get a, a get a seat to talk to me. I got a car. No, do I got I got some insurance. So what, you, what you, are you putting in on anything? Cause when I click that light last thing, I know pastor paid the check, so I I don't know what kind of.
the respect of the church. They build churches in the old some for refuge, safe haven. But if we don't get it together, see, we stop being a safe haven. We we stop being a place where the hurt can come in and run in, find shelter and find food and find prayer. There's more destruction, warring. I don't understand trying to get a, a friend. She gets sick, so you can be the main. You ain't got. It's other doors you can stand at. Even if you want to stand on one side, she can stand on the other. Why she got? Why you got to pray her sick? You want pastor? Come on, sit down and talk to me. Let me give you a list of stuff you got to do. Then I turn it over. Because I ain't fighting you. Because I know my source. See, when you know your source. But as I get, get through running this list off to you, baby, and y'all know he cray cray. I'm saying, listen, he has an idea at 1 o'clock in the morning. You got to wake up. You got, you got an idea at 1 o'clock in the morning. And then he want to know, want to discuss it. And you're you saying, yeah, but why are you listening? Are you listening? Then you got to discuss it. Then he going to turn around and tell me, what you think? Well, baby, you just told me 15 minutes ago. Sleep. Can I give you a in the morning? Well, wait, wait a minute, baby. Don't go back to I want to see you don't wanna God waking you up. See, and you don't got two hours of sleep for about a week, but you want him. Because every idea God give him, plus the idea God giving you, you running on a steady cycle. You better be prayed up. You better be fasted up. And not to mention dealing with the phone calls. Who's sick this week? Who's praying this? It's a lot to deal with. But everybody want to be in your shoes. But don't see your shoes ragged and worn down because you're tired. I'm going to keep going. But quit speaking stuff over people. Causing them to fail. And they proclaimed the fast and set neighbor on high amongst the people. And there came two men, the children of Belial, and set before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Nabab, in the presence of the people, saying, Nabab has blasphemed God and the king. They carried him forth out of the city and stoned him dead. Then they sent to, to, they had the narrative back and tell her that it was okay. They sent to Jezebel saying, Nabab is and is dead. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Nahab was stoned and was dead, that Je, Je, uh, Jezebel said unto Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Nahab the Jezreelite which he refused to give thee for money. For Nabob is, is not alive but dead. So she was, she reinforced why she killed him. Because you offered him money, but since you want it, I'll get it. We got to be careful how the, how the people of God are using one another are we advancing the kingdom or are we destroying the kingdom of God? Be careful how you pray. What are you praying for? Are you praying for the presence of God to fall on your life? Or are you praying for things? Are the things more important to you? How people view you? But who don't have a hell or heaven to put you in, but you worry about how they see you. 
Not how God sees you. Not how God sees your heart. A man looks at you. I don't care. Because my house, I couldn't find none of them men. None of them men. I found Jesus there. Jesus was there lifting me up. Jesus was there laying hands on me. Jesus was there talking me through my depression. One man, man agreed with my mess. Girl, I don't blame you. Go ahead and swallow them ball of pills. I don't blame you. Go ahead and cut your wrist. And then they'll be at the funeral, dressed to a tee, batting eyes at what you want. But they're your friends. They're the ones you're supporting to. Those are the ones you're complaining to. Those are the ones that are inside the church. This is a family. We're, we're, we're not, we are no longer going to be destroying each other in this house. If you have a problem, talk it out. If you can't resolve it, we'll talk it out. But we are family in this house. Facebook, you got to have a family. If you stop by, come family. We're going to treat each other with respect. I don't want to hear no second or third hand about somebody else in this house. If they didn't tell me directly, then if they told you, you can't say it. It's time for us to mature in this church. We got to get it together. How are we going to love and get other people to come in when we, how we hate the people that's already in here? How can I look in the eyes of the Father knowing I destroy you to get what you want? How can I go to him? How can I look my Father in the eyes knowing that I betrayed you? And then once you get it, you throw it to the side. Why? Because you really didn't want it. You just wanted the, it was a pleasure watching you fall, watching you cry. Wrong with the body of Christ. To watch you bump your head, watch you fall, watch you be destroyed, and do no nothing and hinder the response of God. Pray against you from getting your answer. It's time out. Six. Through 18, it says, These things do the Lord, yea, and the seventh are an abomination unto him. A proud look. You high minded. You looking down on people. A lying tongue. Come on, we know you a lie. We got to take everything you say with a grain of salt. We got to Google it. We got to call people to find out whether or not it's true or not. That's a lying tongue. A hand that sheds innocent blood. That means you destroying somebody that has not done anything to you. But you take pleasure in destroying them. And then this is the thing. It don't start with one. Because you become greedy. See, that ain't going to be the only person. See, because if you know you got away with it with them, you're going to try somebody else. Because the need the, the, the need to feel that void. Because that's what it is. Greed. It's a flesh. So the need to feel that fleshly void is going to take more. You only get hungrier and hungrier. So you look around and find out there's nobody there left but you. When people stop dealing with you, that means you are a wasteland, desert. Nothing grows around prosperous. And you wonder why people are weary of you. 
Check your spirit, Jesse. Verse 18, a hard that divide wicked imagination. You always thinking of something evil to do. Ain't nothing never good coming out your mouth. You just a, a, a whole wall of negativity. Baby, Facebook, they just drain it. Like a spiritual leech. You always negative. It takes me hours to get you lifted up. And time I get off the phone and I, and I call you a couple of you back where you started. Sometimes it just get too hard to keep lifting up. Do you know how many people I got to lift up in a day? Tell you something. I don't mind it. But make it easy sometimes. It says that are swift to run to mischief. You are caught up in something. When they want to know something going down, they call you. I, I'm telling you, I had an un. They only, they only call you with bad news. Somebody died. Somebody in jail. Somebody broke. Somebody man gone. Somebody stealing. They only want to call you with a negative word all the time. They never call me and say, girl, good. God is good. God is good. I ain't never heard it. Never. But let somebody be in the hospital in ICU. Girl, let me tell you, I hate to, be, I hate to bother you. you. No, you don't. You, you want to. Because you, you want to be the first. You got to be the first. To let everybody know in the family what's going on. And when, <laughs> this is a sad thing. They start avoiding your phone call. And then you're like, girl, I was trying to get hold of you. I know you were. I already know you ain't got to tell me. I know. See what I'm saying? Something ain't right with that. Let me, let me close up. A false witness that speaks. Come on, you all speaking lies? And the last one that's an abomination. He that sore this amongst the brethren. You purposely trying to divide this house. You purposely coming up against the men and women of God to make sure that you the, only, you the center of, the, of attention. It, everything is surrounding you. Something ain't right. When you keep talking up against the man and woman of God, I don't care where you at. Facebook, I don't care where you at. That's discord. And it's an abomination to God. That means he, it's beyond him hating it. I'm telling you, when the blind, leading the blind, they're going to both fall in the ditch. Make, it, make room for yourself. Because if you dig in that ditch, I know this hard this morning, but I, I, I need this family in here to realize that we're trying to make it better. We're trying to do better. We're trying to get it right in here. We, we want this place to be full of love. A refuge and a, and a safe haven for people to come in who are someplace where they can lay their head and get some serenity, get some peace. A place where I tell them the whole week that they, they'll get it here. And I'm, a, and I'm telling you, you got to love people with their flaws and all. You got, you got to understand that I'm not perfect. You got to understand that I'm not going to always do everything right. But you got to love me regardless. 
Quit tearing me down and start building me up. Give me a foundation to stand on. Show me who Jesus is so I know where to go for the rock. I'm like Jennifer. You going to love me. You going to love. You going to love me. Speaking that for everybody in here. I'm going to love you regardless. I don't care how people say outside this building. I see you as family and a child of God up in him. I'm going to treat you with respect. Because that's the love of God. When you get share it. When you get your job, share it. Make who you say you are. I'm a child of God. My father love regardless. And I'm just like him. When you see him, you see me. You worth it. You you worth it. Jesus, if you don't know your worth, let me tell you, you, you worth it. Every, every ounce of my time, you worth it. Just to see a smile on your face when you come in here Sundays is worth all what I went through all week. You bless my soul. You, you show me love. You, y'all don't understand it, that I be needing y'all on Sunday. That's why I be saying, where's such such that? Because she smiled at me. What's such such that? What's, what's wrong? Do I need to call you? What, what's the problem? So you telling me you didn't need no love this week? That's why you ain't here? You didn't need a hug? Good. You good for months. Get somebody. This is your charge. From here and forth on. Every Sunday. Find somebody old that used to come and find somebody new that want to come. And let's love on them. Let's, let's show them who, who Jesus really is up in here. Can I get a witness? Can I get an amen? amen. That's your charge. Amen? Amen. 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 I ain't going to hold you long because we got another service. And I already went over my time. I already, I don't know, I already looked at me twice. But I, but I had to get it out. I had to get it out of my spirit. You can see, I'm, I'm finished. If there's, there's, there's someone out there that needs to see you, love on them. It's a charge in this house. Somebody old, somebody new. Amen. If you in need of prayer, because it seems like our, our family is here. If you need prayer, please come around the altar. Because God is good, amen. to heal. Yeah, I know. I know you know. 